This free step-by-step -step video comes to you directly from Hayes. If necessary, use a you screwdriver to You can complete more than 200 jobs place. on this vehicle when you purchase the complete Haynes online manual at Haynes.com. Apply the handbrake. Prise the plastic covers from the wheel bolts where applicable. Using the special anti-theft wheel bolt adapter where necessary, slacken each of the wheel bolts half a turn. Position the jack head under the reinforced section of the door sill flange. Raise the vehicle until the wheel is clear of the ground. Support the vehicle with an axle stand under the reinforced section of the sill flange. Fully unscrew the bolts. and remove the wheel. Pull up and remove the panel beneath the handbrake lever. Then unclip the gator and slide it up from the lever grip. Slacken the cable adjuster nut anti-clockwise to remove all tension. Detach the brake cable end fitting from the caliper lever. Then prise out the metal clip and pull the cable from the support bracket. Unscrew the upper guide pin bolt whilst counter holding the guide pin with the second spanner. Unscrew the lower guide pin bolt in the same way. Slide the caliper from the mounting bracket then suspend it from the coil spring with wire to prevent straining the rubber hose. Remove the inner and outer brake pads. If necessary use a screwdriver to lever them from place. Prise the lower and upper guide plates from the mounting bracket. Measure the thickness of all the brake pad friction material. If any pad is worn down to 2mm or less, all four rear brake pads must be renewed. If new pads are to be fitted, the piston must be pushed fully back into the caliper to prevent any dirt particles from being pushed back up into the hydraulic circuit, clamp the flexible rubber hose. Remove the dust cap, fit a spanner over the bleed screw and attach a plastic tube leading to a suitable container. In order to retract the piston, it must be rotated clockwise at the same time as being pushed back. This is best achieved with the piston retraction tool, although it can also be done using circlip pliers, pushing and twisting at the same time. Open the bleed screw and retract the piston fully back into the caliper. As the piston comes to a stop, close the bleed screw. Once the piston is fully retracted, unscrew it slightly until the next piston cutout is visible through the caliper. Remove the retraction tool. Disconnect the tube, 
Remove the spanner and refit the dust cap. Don't forget to remove the hose clamp. Clear the piston face, caliper and mounting bracket with brake cleaner and a brush. Refit the lower and upper guide plates to the mounting bracket. Apply a thin smear of high temperature grease to the pad contact points on the guide plates. Take care not to get any grease on the disc faces. Slide the inner pad into position, ensuring the friction material is against the disc face. Fit the outer brake pad. Maneuver the caliper into position over the pads. Apply a little thread locking compound to the guide pin bolts, then insert them and tighten to the specified torque. Feed the handbrake cable through the support bracket and secure it with the metal clip. Maneuver the cable end fitting into place on the caliper lever. Repeatedly depress the brake pedal to bring the pads into full contact with the disc. Repeat this procedure on the remaining rear brake. Fully apply and release the handbrake five times. Then with the lever set on the second notch of the ratchet mechanism, rotate the cable adjuster nut clockwise until a reasonable amount of force is required to turn each wheel. With the adjustment complete, slide the gator over the lever and clip it into place. Refit the panel beneath the lever. Check and top up the brake fluid level. Locate the wheel over the hub aligning the bolt holes. Insert the retaining bolts and lightly tighten them. Remove the axle stand and lower the vehicle to the ground. Tighten the bolts to the specified torque. Press the plastic caps into place over the wheel bolts. Remove the inner and outer brake pads. If necessary, use a screwdriver to lever them from place. Prise the lower and upper guide plates from the mounting bracket.